Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be doing my July wrap up. Let's get going. I feel like my July has been okay. Um, there were some ups and downs as always, but I feel like I actually read a lot of audiobooks, so more so than physical. But um, yeah, so let's just get going. My first book is Song of Silver Flame and Night by Emily Mangell. And we're following we're following a lad who used to have a different name, but then we have the Atlantean colonizers who invaded her home, her kingdom, and killed her mother. But in her last act of death, her mother had put like a mysterious symbol that is untranslatable, which is like a hidden character from what I understand. So now Vlad wants to find a true meaning of the mark that may help her remember her true purpose while saving her from her trapped life. And even then, there's this guy who said who is a practitioner and he saved her from the tea house. And then after like, Zen realizes just how powerful Vlad is, they team up together to overthrow the Atlantean and Megan, but the mission might be more complicated than they imagined. So, I gave it a 3.5. I don't think it was that bad. One, I did really like the world building. I love how the authors describe everything like the spices and food, theming gods and cosmology. I love everything about what the usual trope. I, I just really like everything about it. I thought that was really nice done. But the usual trope in the book you know, girl with out of magic and glass of boy. I thought they were okay and and like the point of views were balanced well, but I just didn't like the romance. I couldn't really feel any chemistry between them. There was a lot of info dumpings which took away the enjoyment, but the information was actually necessary since the world was so huge, so I honestly thought it was necessary for the info dumpings. Um, but the magic system was good, but just too much was explained. So it's like kind of... For me, I find it kind of confusing now because so much it has been explained. But like, otherwise, um, I love the writing. I thought it was beautiful and medical. So I really enjoyed reading this book. But I but um, I feel like it could have been a little bit less wordy. So, and the main characters, they were okay. I kind of liked a lot, but there were times when she annoyed me as well, so. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I thought it was a pretty good book. The next book is You Should Have Cut Me Up by Jeanette Meadows and the following Grace Evans, who was taking a break from her busy life in New York where she works in finance. She then randomly selects like a location on the maps for her next trip and she ends up renting out an Airbnb on a ranch in the middle of Wyoming. Like, why not? <laughs> However, she, she doesn't know and knows that there's something off about the ranch she chose. So she should have not gotten it, they're just like wild creatures ready to massacre the poor chickens. So they should have gone there and after spending a day. So now we have Calvin, who likes to get his hands dirty and walks around shirtless because that's like the usual thing in books now. So but so now it's impossible to res resist him. And, and now because he met Grace, he turns into this lovesick. Boy. And now since her last day is approaching, Calvin becomes dramatic and he just won't let her go. So, and that's where suspicious things are happening. So, I gave it a three stars. It was okay. I haven't read better horror thriller books. And this was just okay. It was slow and some things were predictable with, with Joe and Charlotte because they were also being a little suspicious. But at the same time, the character's behavior wasn't um, realistic, but the intentions of some characters were pretty clear. So, you know, for spoilers, for example, Kevin's reminder great, like, actually this is not a spoiler, so, that some 
For example, Kevin's reminder embraces the thin blue baby eyes and just she needs to say it's just really annoying and does a lot of repetition with the baby blue eyes. Like we get it, it's blue, we get it, just stop. But um yeah the ending was interesting, not quite how I expected, but at the same but it's really interesting. But at the same time not really sure how to feel about it. So yeah, so those are my thoughts. Um, nothing much. So nothing much is going on. I just thought it was an okay book. The next book is also kind of like a thriller lead. It's What Lies in the Mud by Kate Adams Marshall, and that we are following three little girls who decided to play like a goddess game in the woods at the age of eleven. And after they found the secret and sacred thing left behind the boulder. The ritual sacrifices were bizarre, and so because of that, it kind of left it traumatized with extremely violent and traumatic events. So right now we have Naomi Shaw, who is a survivor, and a very good child who stayed alive so because she got stabbed 17 times with a knife. So, yeah, so now we're falling 25 years later, Naomi is trapped in a relationship, and she is like shooting wedding photos to make ends meet while still suffering from the past. So I gave it a 3 star. It's an okay book, um, I probably think it was too slow. And Naomi was annoying, I just didn't like her and I kept questioning some of the things she was doing. She was, and she was like really rude to everyone, so. I also did not like Kaz and Lynn was also annoying, she kept self doubting almost. So, I like how the police question Naomi so much since she's the one who found the body. So, body, I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> but I didn't really like the Ethan, and the moments with Naomi was also boring. So, and I also found the story to be a little bit boring. But I do like how, like, how we had the action behind it, so. But I think the ending could have been better. And so now just one scene and it didn't really make sense to me. But I guess it, it, it is what it is. So my next book is Gods of Jada Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Gracia. The following girl who's wanting nothing more than just to get away from the home. But of course she went somewhere where she have not should go. So because of that. She accidentally awakens an ancient mind god of death and has to journey with him to regain his throne. So, I gave it 3.5. It was an interesting lead, that's for sure. The characters were up and down, I didn't like Martin, but it was interesting to know why Martin did what he did and the things he did to become the bad person. So I thought that was done really well. And then we have Kasumi was okay, but I didn't really like. I didn't really feel like she was an, in actual danger, but I feel like that the descriptions of the culture were dragging on a bit too much. But I did like the writing with the mythical um, feels to it. Like it has like a lot of mythical fairy tale to it, and I liked how the author combined the mythology of the gods and the animal, but it is a bit slow paced. And I also feel like there were a few plot points that were never resolved as well, so and really, that kind of didn't really make sense. Sometimes I also feel like that the story is predictable, and it kind of follows like a repetitive pattern, like kind of like Cinderella vibe almost. And I feel like the story is also simple, like simple as in like a middle grade could actually read this book as well, and wasn't too complicated, so. If you do have a middle grader, you should recommend this book. So, because it's just not difficult to, to read. And honestly, I feel like um, it should have be, been like more dark. I feel like this, like the way of this book is, is a little bit lighthearted almost. So it should have been like way more darker with a darker tone to it. I'm dealing with an Asian mind god of death. So. It should have been a little bit more dark on. But um, yeah, so it's not too bad, but I just wish there was more off and I wish there were things that had been solved. Next book is Five Survive by Holly Jackson and basically we have six different characters or friends who are going on a spring break. 
So obviously they're excited, they have got their RV going on. So also, and the whole story takes less than 24 hours, but it's amazing. So now, so now, however, instead of getting to the summer break camp, they took wrong turns, but that wrong turn is actually where they're supposed to be. So, and they in the middle of the woods with no soul service, and also, someone took out their tire so they can't go anywhere, and the gas tank was is also empty. They give the walkie-talkie and they give a short amount of time to come out with the answer to a secret what that killer wants, or uh, otherwise they will be killed. So, I gave him a two stars because I hated it. It was bad, the story was annoying, the plot was annoying, you see where this is going? And the characters were also annoying, I mean surprised, no. I'm just glad that one of them died, cause he deserved it. I'm sorry, but he deserved it. So, Red was insecure about everything she did. Oliver was bad and his actions were inexcusable. Like, why would you put your sister in danger just because she looks like your friend? You would, you decide to put her in danger? Like, come on. What kind of brother does that? Nothing was happening in the book. It was just drama and arguing and Simon was also annoying. He always uses that's what she said in like almost every single chapter. I'm like, stop. <laughs> He was so annoying. <laughs> and so, yeah, so honestly, I'm just bad. There were times where I actually wanted to DNF because it was just so bad annoying. And the book was also, like, as you can see, it was really boring and slow and just repetitive. So, obviously, I did not like any characters that were in here. And I just didn't care who died, but except for that one person because I just wanted him out of there. So, yeah, it shouldn't be fun because they got locked in an RV, they have 8 hours to figure out who, what the secret is, and the secret wasn't really interesting, it was predictable. Like, by the time you give up to chapter 5, 10, I forgot how many chapters there are, like, you want to figure it out by, by the end, so. That's not fun. <laughs> Next book is Ithaca by Claire Note, that's number one in the songs of Penelope. So they were for Ithaca and how it has been 17 years since Odysseus left her to fight the Trojan War, which left his young bride Penelope an infant son, Telemachus and behind. The war lasts 10 years but Odysseus has not returned. Penelope is left to fend for herself and her son and run the kingdom of Ithaca with help of her household of maids and advisors. Odysseus' prolonged absence has fueled rumors of his death encouraging hordes of suitors to flock to Penelope's door and ashamedly becoming a fixture in her home. She must make up excuses to hold them at bay. In addition to attack for having a wild tail situation with her suitors, she is also troubled by the presence of a queen, being countered by her mental children for murdering their father. 2.5 to 3 stars. Um, it was honestly boring. I was actually expecting to be the story of Penelope yes. and itself, so. But honestly, by the way how the author was handling Penelope, I really wanted to know more about her than Ithaca. And so, just because the idea was really interesting than Hannah. So the plot never came, and I also feel like the plot never came together. And there were so many characters which I feel like it was unnecessary to have. And so it just, and because of the too many characters, I find it hard to follow who is who most of the time. And so that was just really confusing for me. And honestly, I, because of the too many characters, I feel like it took the shine from Hannah, whom we were supposed to follow in the book. Um, and the story seemed muddled, but because of too many characters, plot lines, and the dialogue. The dialogue could have been better. Sometimes it felt stale and stiff. So, and I, so this is an audiobook, so I did have a difficult time with the narration. I just didn't really like the narrating that, so I couldn't feel like it could have been better. Uh, but, um, 
Yeah, and I also couldn't connect with any of the characters, they're just one dimensional most of the time. So, it could have been better, but I really want to follow Penelope way more than Hannah. So, but we just never got to it. And um, hopefully there is an author we can write about Penelope, because she deserves a book. And my last book, which is a physical book, I did also read it at the, in the reading blog, and that is The Epic Tale of Gilgamesh, translated by Andrew Joy. Andrew and Joy. So basically, it's like the history of Gilgamesh, and explains who he is, what he did in his time. And it begins with the five Sumerian poems, and then Gilgamesh, which is like a Sumerian for Gilgamesh, is king of Uruk. And it's like a deep pendant stories that were later used as a source material for a combined epic. And we have the first surviving version of this combined epic, known as the Old Babylon version, which dates back to the 18th century and is titled after its instant in the Ashari, surpassing all other kings. And only a few tablets have actually survived, so, so that's why I haven't got all these story. I give it a 3 stars. It was really interesting to read a book that has been written over 4,000 years ago. So I also found it really interesting and really really cool to read. Like something from that long ago it can still exist today. Of course there will be some losses on the way but I still find it really interesting that we can actually read something from that many years ago. Um, I, so, but regardless, I did not know too much about Gilgamesh, but I still think it was an interesting read for his story. Uh, the translation, uh, I feel like the translation could be a little bit better. It's a little bit wooden and dry, and a lot of it was repetitive. I remember reading chapter 2, it's like so much of repetitive, it could have easily been taken out. So I really had to skim through it. Otherwise, I would have now finished that book. Um, but the um, translation is not too difficult to read at all. So if you want to start, I do recommend this book. Just because the translation is not difficult to read. I think the interesting part was the relationship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu. I really think that Enkidu had like a positive influence in Gilgamesh because Gilgamesh did turn out to be the better person in the end. So, and so I actually did more research after the book, and it turns out that Gilgamesh is more of an anti-hero than a, like a villain. But I still don't agree with some of the actions that Gilgamesh took, like you know, like selfishly leaving his people behind just to go on a quest for immortality. Like I don't know, I just don't really like that part. And some of the things he did. I can't say it because YouTube will demonetize, but it's at the R and ends with a T, you know what I mean. So, there's also that part. Um, but I really did think Gilgamesh turned a better person, better, because of Enkidu and his positive influence on Gilgamesh. Um, I really like the introduction of the books because there's just so much information, so I really do recommend reading the introduction. Um, but I never liked Gilgamesh, and he was tedious to read, and I said that, and I said before, I just didn't like the things that he did, you know, sleeping with unmarried women, um, things like that. But this is literally the world's like oldest surviving poem, so it has a unique, unique to read, you know, something that's over four thousand years ago. Like that's so amazing that we have something like this. So the other books I have read in July, uh, I know not too much just because I'm focusing on my story. It's going really well. I am almost well. I have about a third left to be finished. So, but then after that, I have to go back and reread what I wrote and all that fun stuff. So, but anyways. So let me know what you have read in July, and please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!